All right, so my name is Gerdy Vermoer, their Great League Guiding Coach, and I am sitting here with Geerte de Jong, which, <laughs> Dutch, which is really nice because now I can say the G just as it's supposed to be instead of saying my name in a way that uh, I don't even recognize. Yeah, it's nice to hear it once in a while in the, in the right pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, it is. So Geerte, welcome. You're Dutch, but you're in Sweden right now. For your um, dissertation, I guess it's called in English. Yeah, my thesis. Masters. Yeah, dissertation masters. Um, but this is um, uh, perhaps you can tell a little bit for those of um, the viewers and listeners that don't know who you are and what you do, what you're doing in Sweden, and how it is connected to perhaps connected to hiking or or not. Um, yeah, I don't know which came first, my love of nature through hiking or through science, but I like both. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm here in Sweden I'm at Lund University for my master's thesis, and it's about um, forests in Sweden, um, whether old growth forests or production forests contain more carbon. Um, and the answer to that is unknown, as far as I know, uh, which is exciting. And if if I can prove which of the two is more productive or that there's no difference mm -hmm. uh, then it this can be used in climate models to predict future climate change or the impact of land use change in the future so that's something that i find really <laughs> interesting yeah it is and it, it's um you mentioned th that you don't quite know what what came first your love for uh, nature through hiking or through science so has love of nature been all, always been present in your life? Yes, yeah, so I've always loved loved nature, but I'm also a very curious person. Uh -huh. So, like for a four year old or a five year old, you wouldn't call it science, mm -hmm. but it's still asking the questions and wanting to know. Um, so I would, I, I see that as the same, like the curiosity: how does the system work? Yeah. Why is it raining? Why is it growing here? Uh, yeah. As well as enjoying it, just from like a more of like a ethical or like I don't know for your free time you, mm -hmm. like without the questions yeah so you grew up with uh, with an interest in nature is what you're saying uh, the, the, was nature played nature a big part in your family um yeah because actually my my, my dad has, this has been well not not similar research but also uh, into geographical uh, science geographical uh, more more towards the social mm -hmm. um, but as a family we always went camping uh, we went sailing we went like we played outside a lot when I was young so I was definitely raised with a love for nature <laughs> yeah so when did um, hiking get into come into your life um, I guess like in Dutch we don't really have a word specifically for hiking like that covers it, all of it as we do in English yeah I, um, but like as a family we always went for walks or hikes mm -hmm. um, but we never like backpacked <laughs> um, to call it like that or um, like stayed overnight uh -huh. so I, guess I, I couldn't really point to like when we started hiking um, as a, as, a, as a family, but the first time I did like a, like an overnight hike was when I was a second year student, I think, or third year, somewhere in my student life. And you <laughs> um, were, how old, 19, something like that? 19, 19 20, something like that, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then um, two guys that I knew had previously hiked in uh, Norway, mm -hmm. and they wanted to hike in, 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 in Scotland, and they asked if I would join. And then we asked one other girl, so we were with four. Yeah. We shared one three-person tent <laughs> between the oh, four of us. Very cold. Yeah, I mean, even with four people, it still got very cold. Mm. Uh, but that was my first overnight, uh, and we did a we did a full week. Um, uh -huh. And um, even when before starting this hike, I had already signed up for. Um, the school in the U.S. that would take me to the AT. Ah. <laughs> so I signed up for a two-month hike before ever staying overnight, mm -hmm. uh, backpacking. <laughs> uh, so this 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 week was really my first experience, I guess. So what about that week? 
um, made you get really get into hiking because what I what I see from you on Facebook, you hike a lot. You go into yeah. nature a lot. Um, I think like previously I, I had walked in nature and like did, did walks and hikes and daily treks. But this time we were we had everything with us. We had food, water, a stove, a ca like a tent, everything. Yeah. We just walked. We didn't have a specific plan. We had like an area we wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. We just walked until we thought we had walked enough and we saw an area that we really liked and we pushed our tent. Yeah. And then the next morning you wake up there in that one beautiful place instead of like going in and out in one day mm -hmm. and then going back home, um, back to comfort, I guess. Um, yeah. We just pitched our tent in the most, in the most beautiful places. Mm -hmm. And then the second day you go further. So you get to places you've never been yeah um, or, or you would otherwise never get um so that's something that i really liked and i mean my experience with hiking is that the first day is always terrible like the first day everything always goes goes wrong and <laughs> really? i mean the first day we got lost we didn't find water uh we couldn't find our camping spot um our map didn't work and we that ran into map not work Mm, well, the guy <laughs> that was supposed to bring the map had printed out some like Google Maps images instead of bringing an actual map. Oh, so okay, yeah, we exactly. found out that, that that didn't work, so we got lost, and then we found the town bottom map, got lost with the map. <laughs> um, it was it was really a pretty terrible <laughs> terrible first day, um, and so the second day we hitched hiked uh, okay. to above the the, the tree line, mm -hmm. so we escaped the midges which is like these terrible little flies. Yeah, yeah. And they are so terrible, they, they get through the maze of your tent. Mm. So uh -huh. yeah. those, are, those are the worst. Um, so then we hitchhiked above tree line and we didn't have them anymore. So the second day was perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I guess I, I kind of liked the challenge um, and the perseverance aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's multiple things to it, but I think that mostly what I enjoy is the freedom of just pitching your tent wherever you want. Yeah. Um, being a beautiful place and like, oh, I could stay here tonight and I could wake up here tomorrow. That would be nice. Yeah. And you can actually do that. Yeah. So. It is, it is. But the, uh, the few times I've done that, that is one of the most beautiful things you can, you can yeah. do. And uh, it, just the knowledge that, or knowing that you're in a place where hardly ever, but ever anybody comes because you have to hike a full day to get there. And yeah. People do that. On the other hand, in Europe, where we both live, um, mm -hmm. there's not many places where you can do that. Scotland is one of them. Yeah. Sweden, Norway, Norway, I don't know, but Sweden, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess it's not always to get away from from people, because part of what I like about hiking is the people that, that you meet. Yeah. Um, um, but also for me, I'm a, I, I don't know if you, if you found out before, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm like, I'm a Christian and to me being in nature brings me closer to God. Mm -hmm. So that's also an aspect of nature that I really, really enjoy. It, like clears your mind, um, gives me perspective, helps yeah. me see clearer, helps me see God clearer. Mm -hmm. Um, so for that, I don't necessarily need to go somewhere where no one ever has ever gone. No. I just need out <laughs> yeah. and like this disconnected i guess exactly yeah it's yeah. not so much that i meant that um there's nobody that's ever gone there it's just that there's fewer people there because fewer people take the effort or make the effort or mm -hmm. it, to walk a day and find a nice spot to, to it, yeah. and it is an experience that is uh, it's nice to do it by yourself but it's also nice to to share that experience mm -hmm. And I'm not Christian myself, but I do get what you mean because I'm, I feel closer to whatever, to creation, I guess, to yeah. the universe and connected with the earth. And that's why I go into the mountain because I find when I stay too long in civil civilization, especially mm -hmm. in cities, I sort of, I feel as, so, as though I disconnect from myself. So I go yeah, into the mountains to connect like... with myself again, to be whole again. Yeah. Especially for, for me now, because like this is the first time that I have had really to do a nine to five. <laughs> uh, yeah. kind of student. Um, so um, just sitting behind the behind the screen every day, even though it's a subject that I like. Yeah. Uh, 
I barely have time to like just go out on a regular day and I sit in the same office every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really need that Saturday hike. <laughs> like I really need that yeah. little bit of forest, like fresh air and wind in my hair time. And I, I just, that's, that's the part that keeps me <laughs> like healthy and going. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So you, you also said uh, you hike the AT, which for those of us, for those who don't know what it means, it's the Appalachian Trail mm -hmm. in the eastern United States. I always have to do northeast, southwest. Yeah. Eastern <laughs> yeah. eastern United from, States. It goes from Georgia to Maine mm -hmm. and it follows the Appalachian Mountain. Um, so it's like, it's like a, like a mountain range kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not super high. It's not Alps for sure. No, um, it's, it reminds me of the Ardennes a bit. Yeah, I think they're higher, but they're like the Ardennes in Belgium. Yeah, it really feels like the Ardennes, but it's a little higher. Yeah. Uh, so I was in the U.S. I did a I did a did a did a school. Mm -hmm. It's called the Discipleship Training School. Um, what training school? A discipleship Training okay. School. Mm -hmm. So this was a this was a Christian school that's geared towards. Like, how can you live your life as a Christian? How can you be a disciple? And that means, a disciple means to be a student of Jesus, mm -hmm. basically. Um, how can you live that and how can you make that practical? So yeah. in the school, we did a lot of volunteer work with uh, kids from bad neighborhoods. Um, and we had a lot of, like, uh, lectures and work on, like, um, how to implement biblical truth in your life. I yeah. know this sounds very Christian, and I mean, it is. Um, but I think it is, it's, it. also, it's also, um, these are very like, uh, global truths, like mm -hmm. take care of your neighbor, yeah. um, love one another. Um, and so as a, as a group, we hiked the AT. We didn't hike the full AT. Um, we hiked for two months and our goal was not to just hike, but also to, um, to talk to the people that, that, that were hiking and help them in any way we, we could. Uh -huh. So we went into their culture, into the hiker culture, and we hiked with the hikers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so what we did was just hiking as well, um, but also we did trail magic. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but you have to explain. I know what it is, but yeah. I don't think a lot of people... So, trail magic is where uh, a footpath or a trail uh, crosses a road mm -hmm. usually um, or is accessible um, mm -hmm. uh, people will set up food um, or uh, leave behind uh, water um, and usually it's something small like you find just a basket with like um, uh, chocolate bars or you will find uh, water on, on, on the side of the trail which is really good <laughs> if you yeah. find water yeah. um, and so we decided to do that way over the top. So we had two vans follow us, <laughs> um, full of food. Uh -huh. And then we would set up, people could resupply off of our food and we would, oh, wow. we would make something, something fresh. So we would make oatmeal for breakfast, we would make coffee, make hamburgers for lunch, or we would make oh, wow. like a, 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 a full dinner. And so hikers would, would come up expecting like just a soda or something. Uh -huh. And we would have a full meal ready. Um, and this just opened up the chance to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of brings me to why we were going to these people. Because like um, the AT, if you hike it fully, it's five to six months. Mm -hmm. And barely anyone does that. And that's have a re very good reason to hike for five to six months. Yeah, that's true. Because if you do it for oh, it's just a cool time and I just want to have a, a, a little adventure, you're really done after one month of hiking because it's day in, day out. Um, it's not super spectacular. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not great views every, every corner. Um, and if you get up every day, uh, you get sore, everything hurts. Like, you really have to want to keep going. And so a lot of people who hike EAT have, a, have some kind of story. They have something that they're thinking about either they just graduated and they don't know what to do with their life mm -hmm. um, or they just got divorced and they don't know what to do with their life yeah. um, or they have like a midlife crisis or uh, they have a burnout um, which you apparently experienced um, so a lot of people have a reason yeah. for hiking 
five to six months. And so we talked with them and we talked about their reason and like why they were doing it. And we were able to help quite a lot of people, I guess, in a coaching type of way as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just there to support, to cheer on um, and to hand out food and uh, just be generally interested in these people and in, and in their, their, their stories. Yeah. Um, and it was really good. It was, I mean, the hiking part was amazing, <laughs> uh, but also this, this people part is something that I really enjoyed. Yeah, I can imagine. And you must have made a lot of people very happy when you, you know, with yeah. spreads with hamburgers and, and mm -hmm. yeah, and we had a group of people instead of ramen noodle like or something. A, like a hiker family of like four guys or five guys who like joined on the trail. Like they didn't know each other before, but yeah. we call that mm -hmm. family. And they kind of like followed us whenever they would hear that we were close and would hike the extra mile. And so I think we met them eight or nine times, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> which was fun. But so for the hiking part, um, of course, the U.S. is different than what I was used to coming from the Netherlands. So we had to take care of bears and snakes. And um, well, I mean, if you're hiking for two months, as we were doing, like you also have to like train before, like you really have to be a little bit trained before you start because otherwise the shock to your body is just too much. Yeah. So Where did you we, start? Um, we started halfway, like just, bef just before the halfway point is, um, is in Harpers, Harpers Ferry is where the, it's like, not Virginia, isn't it? Um, oh, no, it's Virginia. before that. Yeah, we, we started on the border of West Virginia and Maryland, I think. Okay. And then in Maryland is Harpers Ferry, if I'm correct. But it's a long, it's like two years ago and all the, all the states I missed. I'm just from. thinking, um, West, uh, just for the people who are not familiar with uh, the topography of the United mm -hmm. States, it's uh, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, West Virginia. Virginia. No, it's Maryland first Virginia. Is, is on the coast. Sorry? Is it? Maryland is on the coast? Maryland? Yeah, I mean, they're all coastal states. Yeah, um, but Maryland is a, bit, is, is a bit more, is, is smaller and a bit more to, towards the state. And then you get to Washington, D.C. And then it's Pennsylvania yeah. and up further north. I think. Yeah, New York, Connecticut, yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. I really, I, I, I should know the order, but I, but I don't. No, I, <laughs> I, no, I don't know that north, northeast, eastern part very well. But, yeah. um, nope. So you just so people know you were about you were just so you're just leaving uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Blue Ridge. Yeah, Park. yeah, yeah. We were just yeah. Then, yeah. We 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 started just after that. So in the middle, it's relatively flat. I mean, it's still mountains. Yeah, it's wooded. It's, it's, it's relative. It's not as hilly as further down south. Yeah, but it's still. So we know. we started halfway also because of like the mental halfway point for people. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone you meet there has already hiked for two months. Yeah. Uh, and everyone who is not really committed has already stopped. So we decided to start halfway. It also came out well with our timing because there's one season to walk. Um, so there, there's like a there's like a hiker bubble. <laughs> yeah. Of like yeah. people walking the same direction almost at the same time. Yeah. So we decided to try and chase the hiker bubble. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't hike every day because we were also handing out food and doing trail magic. Yeah. So um, we usually hiked for like two or three days, did one day of trail magic and hiked on. And then during the weekends, we had like our time as a team mm -hmm. um, because we were spending so much time like talking to people. We also had to have time to like, as a team, like process what, what we had done. Um, so we did a little bit of every state. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we, we skipped ahead uh, because we didn't want to miss the bubble on our non-hiking days. Yeah, okay. So I didn't like hike two months or yeah, straight like through. straight through. So it was actually still hiked was, a lot. I still hiked a lot. I think exactly. Um, I think I hiked somewhere between three hundred and four hundred kilometers. Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> Probably as fit as I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Yeah, yes, that's that's what hiking does to you. Yeah. So you said you when you started telling us about the uh, Appalachian Trail, you said um, you trained a little bit beforehand, or you need yeah. to train a little bit beforehand. Can you share a little bit about what kind of what that looks like? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, you can start without training, 
but then basically your first weeks are training. Yeah. So like you shouldn't start out. Uh, so everything I know about DAT is in miles. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but one mile is 1.6 kilometers yeah. for everyone checking. Um, so at, if you if you just start out, mm -hmm. do five mile days or eight mile days, but don't go f anything beyond 10 because you will break your body yeah. if you don't. So we, we train. Um, for three months, we went to the gym five times a week. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, at 5 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> we were really committed. Um, and then um, uh, every every Friday morning, there was this hill in Richmond where my, 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 my school was, Richmond, Virginia. There was this hill, and it had it, it was in a, in, in a park, and it had stairs. Um, uh -huh. So it, I think it was like 200 or 300 steps. Wow. Uh -huh. So like two decent stairs. And um, so we, we would run up and down and mm -hmm. do like stretches in, in between. Uh, and so every week we wanted to increase. So maybe the first week we ran up and down seven times um, without breaks, unless you really needed it. Uh -huh. um, and then the next week we would try and go for nine, nine times up and down. And so after a month and a half, we started adding a backpack, uh, just yeah. an empty one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you start adding weight to the backpack. So, you in the end, I think we ran up the stairs with like a with like a backpack of like five or six kilos, and we did that like six or seven times. You must have been incredibly fit. Yeah. So when we when we started, I think our first day was a twelve mile day, and mm -hmm. I mean it was still killing. Like after all that training, twelve miles was still very was still very hard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't underestimate. Like if you if you start, either just be patient with yourself <laughs> and don't overdo it, mm -hmm. uh, or train really well beforehand so you can like jump into it. Um, but mm -hmm. either way, like the first day is always gonna gonna be hard. That's my experience. Like yeah, yeah, it is. And well, I've trained for long distance, but not the way you did. Uh -huh. I don't think I, was, I I don't think I have the stamina to go to a um, fitness studio five days a week i don't i there's nothing yeah, I, mean, I like it, about a fitness it was a part of our program and we had to do it and there was like kind of like a i mean there wasn't really anything if you didn't do it but you signed up for this so you want to do it and, yeah, like, and when you're doing it as a group perhaps it's not as bad but yeah. so there's different ways i guess in which you can train what i did and i'm lucky because i live you know i have mountains at my doorstep so mm -hmm. what i did is i started out with a day pack and just hikes a lot in the mountains and then I started yeah, I mean, getting weight that's, you know, that's a great training. I yeah. increased my pack and I increased my pack weight and at some point um, just I was training for the John Muir Trail which is wilderness which is you mm -hmm. know in, in, on the a on the AT apparently you have a bit more opportunity to re um, where you, you cross roads more so there's yeah. more opportunities to re um, how do you resupply well, yeah, and uh, and I had to um, and I had to carry a bear canister, so I was mm -hmm. I ended up with a backpack with a, a bucket of sand in it. Oh wow! To uh, yeah. to um, imitate the shape mm -hmm. and the weight of a bear canister. Yeah, and that's how I got fit. And I I don't know. I think there's there's different ways in each to each his own. I liked for me just hiking a lot and and mm -hmm. getting the backpack heavier and heavier. Yeah, I think um, that's getting a, that's that weight in your back, I think that will work, is one of the most important things because you're, however fit your legs are and however fit your, you are, if you're not somehow used to carrying some weight on your body, mm -hmm. I think that that whole thing of of all that extra weight on your back that that can really break you mentally. And yeah, and well. also, so it, it, you have to have like a good backpack that leans on your hips, not yeah. on your shoulders. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, I definitely think I had an uh, like a like a start up because like most of the people in this school, I was the only <laughs> European. Yeah. Um, so like, but with Dutch Dutch people, we bike everywhere. So I definitely had like a leg up. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I have already biked a lot, so um, like starting off, I was at the same level as the guys instead of the girls. Okay. Um, just because Dutch people bike, mm. uh, 
so it's also like what you already do in your normal life if yeah. you just this, i didn't like uh like as a as a as, as a racer it wasn't like a a, a, a <laughs> like it, it was just like normal traffic no, it's back. transportation you, you, yeah, you, you have like, to go somewhere in the netherlands you can you take a bike yeah yeah so it, like that that wasn't intense training but it still gave me a better fitness yeah you um, have a so basic I, fitness level that's higher than yeah. somebody who, who doesn't do that yeah. yeah so i definitely think that there's uh like multiple ways to, to 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 train but like our our goal as a team was really to be like really fit because we also wanted to help other people yeah. so occasionally we carried someone who was really done we carried some of their some of their packs or we got water for them and you have to carry extra water um or you want to be able to catch up with people who have already been hiking two and a half months so they have a high pace and we just stepped in yeah. so it was also a lot of like our intention was to be at a higher level mm -hmm. uh, for what we were doing. But I think if I would start hiking now, I would never train this much again. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't have the discipline um, and I don't have the necessity to either. Yeah, that's true. So, so you started out, you started out with a, a kind of a, a, sh a shorter trek in Scotland, then you did a really big one. In, uh, in uh, near AT. Um, and you told me before we got on, uh, or we started recording, that you now usually do day hikes, that you don't get to do as many treks as, as perhaps you would like or at all. I mean, part of it is I, I don't mind walking alone, but I enjoy walking with people. Mm -hmm. um, and in my like friend network, there's not a lot of people who are crazy enough to uh, be in discomfort for a week. <laughs> um and go and go hike with me mm -hmm. um so like to do longer treks and actually go somewhere i mean it not only re requires money and planning but also uh, in, in my case it would require a hiking buddy i guess because mm -hmm. i would enjoy it more with people mm -hmm. especially if it's a longer trek yeah um, so that, that that's part of it and also uh i mean like for a two-month trek you really have to make time but yeah. a week you could maybe do during the summer so I've definitely done like shorter, like just shorter overnights, mm -hmm. um, like just two days, one night, um, a couple of, a, a, a couple of times, mm -hmm. but it's really like how to make time for it within your schedule. Yeah. And so currently I just have like the Saturday. <laughs> um, so if I want to do an overnight, I either have to leave Friday after uh, afternoon or I have to like do my whole weekend and have no time to clean up or do laundry or whatever. Yeah, um, that's also true. So it's, a, it's a little bit of what you have time for, but yeah, I think shorter hikes are also nice and sometimes also get you like a lot of the same benefits of like getting your head clear. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If you don't have the opportunity to go longer. That's true. So uh, let's see how far. Uh, just checking the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, looking back on your hiking experience and looking uh, and, and if there was a part of wisdom that you wanted to share with um, our experience that you wanted to share with people that are starting out and that uh, mm -hmm. have always thought, well, you know, I'd like to do it, but I don't know how and what do I need to know and where do I start? You know, yeah, so most of my hiking experience i learned from more experienced hikers <laughs> so going to scotland was my first longer trip and i went with two guys who had gone before and like these were not super experienced guys because they had a stupid map um, <laughs> we were super cold uh we got lost and we even tried to isolate our tent with like putting ferns in between like the inner and the outer wall uh -huh. um, we weren't experts, but we also didn't die. And I think that's the most important part. Like as okay. long as you have a basic level, and especially within Europe, like a lot of the time, like forests aren't that dangerous. Like <laughs> um, in the most of the forests, you will not run into bears. In most of the forests, you will not run into snakes. Um, yeah, so nice. like you can, if you have decent gear, you can, you can go. Um, yeah. So I don't know, like all of the stuff that I learned was from more experienced hikers and for the AT, I definitely had 
like we had some moments where we trained how to hang a bear bag mm. um, how to filter water yeah um, and those are just but it's easy things and you can learn them quickly uh, exactly yeah that's true make sure that the first time you go out <laughs> you have someone with you who can save you if you need um, <laughs> but yeah <laughs> that's true yeah and it's um um i think especially in europe and in large parts of Europe, there's um, you do, if even if you want to do an overnighter, you don't have to camp. There's there's lots of places in Europe where you can do an overnighter and find a mountain inn where you can sleep, which is still pretty basic. Mm -hmm. You're walking through most wonderful nature without uh, having to um, to worry about where am I going to pitch my tent? Am I allowed to pitch my tent? Uh, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. And like you said, there's very little wildlife that you have to be scared of. And in all the years that I've been hiking, whether alone or in a group, in Europe, I've never run into somebody where I was worried about what was going to happen next. Never. I've had it happen to in the, in the States once where I was like, these people are a bit funny. Let's, you know, get out of here quickly. But that's the only time in the, what is it now? 15 20 years that I've been hiking so yeah I mean I guess like it's it's natural to be cautious and to be a little little scared of stuff but I I mean I am scared of flying <laughs> but I still take a and take an airplane because I know that it's an irrational fear so yeah. I still I still fly because I want to get somewhere <laughs> when we can't get by car or train yeah um, I mean, a train is better for the, <laughs> yeah. for the environment, so that, that's, a, that's a great, great excuse within Europe. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to go to, to the US, I obviously have to fly. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not going to stop me because I know that it's, that it's not that dangerous. Yeah. And if you know that hiking is not that dangerous, you can still be scared, but it doesn't have to stop you. No, because that's true. It's an irrational fear. Yeah. And I found that... Um, uh, people that really want to make trouble, they don't usually take the trouble of hiking for a day to get to, you know, to go and make that trouble. Yeah, and I mean, even if, like, there's so many, <laughs> this is probably, my mom shouldn't say this, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's so many ways that you can die or that something bad can happen within yeah. a second. If I bike through Malmö at, at, at night, there's probably more danger than if I would hike in the forest here alone. Yeah. Um, I like both, both places aren't crazy dangerous, but like there's so I would many. Say it's it's more likely to get run over in Amsterdam by a tram or something than it is the, the, the likelihood that I run into somebody in the mountains that will do me harm. Yeah, and I mean there's obvious things that you can do, like take a phone that is charged. Um, but if if you're outside of cell range, then that's not going to help. No. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, common sense does a whole lot of good. Let, let people know where I am. I always let people know where I am, where yeah. I am where I'm going and where I am supposed to get to at, at around what time with a little bit of extra room for delays. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that, that's, that's like a smart thing to do, exactly. to let people know of your plans, especially if you go alone, but also if you go with others. Yeah. Uh, now that's so. sort of basic, um, hiking basic one-on-one. Yeah, like, it's just letting people know this is what I'm going to do. This is where uh, how long I expect to stay out, and this is when I expect to stay to come back. Yeah, and if I don't return by this time, yeah. and if um, I'm not, yeah, then start uh, calling search and rescue or something. Yeah, something like that. Something so, like that. <laughs> <clears throat> great advice. What is um, if you look at your pet? What is one thing that you always always carry with you i always okay well this is gonna sound funny after our past conversation but i always carry a knife um okay. and like a, a sharp knife because not because of danger but because you can use it for so many ways um like is it a pocket stuff. knife or a hunting knife or a steak knife well, I, I wouldn't know it's like a hiker knife i bought okay. it from a swedish company a couple years ago um, but it's not like one that flips out. It's like a decent knife. Okay. And if I would take it with me on the train, people would be kind of weird looking. 
Um, you, can, you cannot take it into the into an airplane with you. You have to put it in your. In no, your no. I mean, I, I actually have, but by accident, and nobody found out, which made me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I always take a take a take a knife. I mean, you can. It's it's just useful for anything. I yeah. if I go overnight, I always bring duct tape. I mean, yeah. if something rips, if something breaks. Duct tape is um, wonderful. Yeah. 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 Um, and if I stay overnight, I always take a water filter because, like, those are the things that you really need to to survive. Like, if you can get water, then you're you're set for a longer time. Yeah. Even if I just go out here in Sweden, like just one hour, I will take a water filter, just because. I mean, I probably don't even need it. No. Because there's like public restrooms everywhere, um, <laughs> but. Yeah. It's just a good thing to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? I mean, I try. I, I always take a take a compass. But if you're on marked trails, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And I always take my my phone. But sometimes if we don't have cell range. <laughs> no, no. That's you're mentioning pretty much. I I don't know. I almost never bring a phone compass, or I have. I think I have one in my backpack, but I can't remember the last time I took it out to look at. Yeah, it. I mean, I I almost never use it, and if I would have to, I probably wouldn't know how to use it properly. So now thinking about it, why do I take it? Um, I don't know, but it's like standard there, and I have these like. My dad gave me these expired like flares. <laughs> um, I mean, they probably work. And I'm not going to buy new ones because they're super expensive, but well, I take it. You know, and worst case scenario, you can start a fire with it. I mean, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I saw That's there are grills that one. do that. I have, I have uh, <laughs> I've forgotten to take a lighter with me. And then there was no warm food, and that's a, that's a big deal. Mm. Um, so, yeah, a lighter, like, if you go overnight, the amount of stuff you have to take increases by this much. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, for ab for absolute survival, you don't need that much. No, that's true. That's true. So um, we're coming up to the end, and um, I'd like to ask you two more questions. Okay. What is your favorite book when it comes to hiking or nature? Um, well, part of our school in the U.S. was that we had to read this book. Uh, it's called Becoming Odessa. It's from Jennifer. I don't know her last name, but she's like, she is the first woman who set a trail record on the Appalachian Trail. Okay. And she hiked it without any prior um, experience, and she wrote a book about it, and it reads really nicely. Okay. Um, so it's one of my favorite books, also because um, it was very close. Like it was very relatable I guess like um, the people that were teaching my school knew her and like we got her book and it was signed and it was just like uh, the whole thing about it made it very personal for me yeah. um, and I also really enjoyed reading the book because it's, it's very open and very clear about what's the struggle and what's the fun part and why you actually hike for that long. Um, I'm going and to read that. I haven't I never heard of it. Become oh, yeah. an Odessa. I'm going yeah. to look at look yeah. up. I, I, I love that book. <laughs> I love I love reading yeah. about other people's experiences on uh, on long distance trails. So um, yeah. I'm going yeah. to look it up and I'm going to put a link in it to it in uh, the comment section when this video comes out. Oh yeah, cool. Um, cool. Yeah, so I think that's definitely my favorite one so far. <laughs> Great. And then the last one. Do you have a favorite um, hiking or nature quote? Ooh. Um, did you ask me that before? I think That's I did. Yeah. I think I yeah, said one, but look it up. I probably don't even know. Um, I think oh, there are so many quotes that are good, but I don't know them by heart, really. Um, I'll have to look it up. But um, there's one. There's 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 one verse in the Bible. This makes me immediately of a Christian, but that's fine. <laughs> um, and it says uh, how the heavens declare the glory of God, um, and that's something that I always think about when I see like the magnificent clouds or like the impressiveness of nature, mm -hmm. uh, like how it declares the glory of the Creator. Um, so to me, that that's a really important one. 
Yeah. I think it's a really nice one too. Yeah. yeah. And it's true. It's, yeah, I can relate to that. When I go, I was sitting on a mountain somewhere or last Sunday, you know, the clouds broke open and had been cloudy all day and the, and the sun came out. Yeah, I could, I may not uh, be um, that religious, but I can, it's definitely almost a religious experience when that happens. Yeah, I think it's something that really makes you realize how small you are, yeah. but also how much unnecessary beauty there is in nature. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it also always makes me, it, it, the smallest, that, that part, but also how fleeting we are, how short. Yeah. Yeah, how how tiny in every respect we are in relation to nature. It's, it's, yeah, and how small our problems are. <laughs> yeah, how insignificant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and just sitting there and, and, and taking in the smells and the sounds and, and not hearing anything but natural sounds. Yeah. That's, I love that. I love that. Same. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to talk about it in this way and also makes me realize again that I want to do a longer trek soon. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I look forward to, uh, to seeing photographs of whatever it is you're doing in, uh, in Sweden there and uh, inspiring us in the Women Who Hike group in uh, Who Hike Europe group. Yeah, I should post more in there. Oh, well. I'm bad at I'm bad at Facebook. <laughs> you're busy. You're busy with all the things that you're doing in the, in your studies. So again, thanks. I, I really enjoyed it. I loved hearing about your experiences. Yeah, um, thank you too. <laughs> and you know, uh, may, maybe one day you'll hike in the, in Austria, or I'll hike in Sweden, and we run across each other. Would yeah. be nice. <laughs> thank you, and have a great great night. Thanks, you too. All right. Bye.